what is disability? How is it seen? With derision, compassion, <coughs> bewilderment, whatever. Disability is the inability to live freely without restraints, either physical or mental. There are many disabilities that go unnoticed or are assumed to be something that they are not, like deafness, for instance, or diabetic instability, often seen as craziness or drunkenness. But I'm going to steer away from the traditional view of disability and include in my list other forms not generally recognized as inhibiting the free expression of, body, of mind and body. They are homelessness, incarceration, obesity, old age, and various conditions of chronic health problems. This situation has never been accepted <coughs> passively. Before the Act for Disabled Americans uh, was passed, there was no access for the disabled on public transports in New York City, or other cities too. A courageous woman, Comrade Betsy Gimble, confined to a wheelchair, took on the city of New York, <laughs> fighting to change this. She was undaunted by the resistance from the bureaucrats and continued to bravely struggle. The final result some years later was the inclusion of ramps in buses and only now in 2014 are we seeing the construction of elevators in some of the subways. <coughs> Betsy, dear comrade, we salute you. Another fiery advocate for political change is Comrade Rosie Neidenberg, now confined to a wheelchair and in her 90s, who struggled and fought not for herself, but for revolutionary changes for all. She audaciously interrupted a McCarthy hearing, ooh la la, <laughs> and is still working faithfully preparing the mailing of WW newspapers each week. Rosie, dear comrade, we salute you. Okay. We have a disabled caucus which meets fairly regularly and you are welcome to join us here and at our demos. We need solidarity and unification in all our struggles. It makes us stronger. If you get a chance to look at some of the photos of demos in the past, you will see people in wheelchairs in the forefront. Uh, you know, I'm a little confused here. Now. <laughs> what I did. I can't do that. Just don't count this in as my minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay, I got you. I've got it. <laughs> Um, although our struggle can take a personal edge, we are international in spirit. When I was very young, I had this image of growing old gracefully, spending my time in a rocking chair, admiring the antics of my grandchildren in the peace of old age. Oh, alas, that is not how it works. <laughs> Much of my time is involved in battling the system to secure assistance for my needs, be it a home helper, a wheelchair, or a therapist. It is a struggle, and I do not blame the workers involved, for they are bound by the restriction of the system. And I wrote, after the experience, a poem. I tend, I'm really not a writer, I'm more of a poet, so I'm able to express imagery and feelings, emotions better through poetry, so you will bear with me. It's called, I called it bureaucratic bungling. <laughs> Getting a home helper after a life of grief was not so easy. It would test your belief, belief that if you had need, that the state would take heed. <laughs> oh, but no, oh no. They hummed and they hoard, left me panting and begging like a dog with three paws. Okay, said the nurse, we'll give you some time. 
But only in the afternoon, the morning's too prime. But afternoons would limit my life, cut off my socialising, and cause me much strife. I need visits to the senior centre where activities alert my mind and keep me enlightened and help my moods. Afternoons are no good, I argued and wheedled. You can only have mornings unless, you cannot have mornings unless you're a diabetic and need help with the needle. Sorry, said the nurse, I, that's as far as I go. But, but wait, said I, it really isn't. So I am diabetic, I need more help. Then why didn't you tell me, she said with a yelp. I did, said I. Look at the computer, the info is there. Well, so it is, she said. Well, I want to be fair. So one quick call to the office, consult with some unknown. Well, well, she said, all ready to go. You'll have your morning help. Just four hours, though. So good luck, goodbye, and now I must go. Incarceration is to me another form of disability because most so-called crimes are survival reactions and would not be happening if the system was created for people's needs. <laughs> this is from, a, this is from a, a description of prisoners who have a little writing circle within, in Rikers Island. Why do we write? We have no choice. The words come gushing out, even though we are surrounded by wire, <coughs> by fences, by hacks who stand around looking to get our backs. Why do we write? We must. We need to share the emptiness of life in here. The pain, no gain, the fear, the excitement, the longing for freedom, regretting what was, even though much was done for survival. We have survived, even in this hellhole. Okay. No, that's okay. Well, I don't have time for that. <laughs> As we are celebrating women's struggle, I wish to present these poems on elderly women. What do we think when we see an elderly woman shuffling down the street, not too steady on her feet, dressed in clothes that have seen many years of use, Clothes that can be maybe too loose, reminiscent of a younger, fuller body. Clothes that might not be adequate for the weather, a bitter expression on her face. Do we see the inadequate clothing as an indication of a meager income from Social Security that is now being threatened with extinction? Do we see the bitter face as a message of pain and disappointment of a lifetime of struggle to survive, ending in subsistence? Or do we see her at all? A poem about old age. The floor creaked as she shuffled by. The window creaked as opening it she would try. The house creaked as the wind went sweeping by, sweeping, sweeping, like she was, unsleeping. Twas the midnight hour when she would wake and groan. She felt so cross and dour as she did moan. Why can't I sleep? What must this be? In old age one should reap some comfort as a sea of calm and happiness. Oh, woe is me. My life seems such a mess. She sat a while, then straightening up, creaking in sync with the house, she smiled, breathed easy, and thought that although old age is not so great, at least I'm here, just 88. Yes, I'm here, yes, here and now. I don't know how, excuse me, <coughs> I don't know how, but this I know, I am a survivor. Yes, I am a survivor. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I can't put it in. Can you? This hand doesn't work <laughs> too well. Okay.